this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. I am not in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm outside Nashville, Tennessee, about 95 miles southeast on the way to Atlanta and Pelham, Tennessee at the Cavern. Special place with a very special band. Steven of Sun O is here and we are in a cave, folks. And uh, if this was not the most appropriate band to introduce a cave for a rig rundown. It is this band. <laughs> and we are literally testing, as we saw during kind of sound check, line check with Greg and Steven, is the we're testing the structural integrity of the Earth's crust with your guys' <laughs> volume. So uh, let's get right into it, Stephen. This is a Travis Bean that uh, a lot of your fans have seen you use for years and years, so tell us about it. Um, well, I've been using Travis Bean for about 20, 20 years or so, maybe a little more. This, this particular instrument is a, uh, one of the new Travis Beans that mm -hmm. Kevin Burkett started doing with Mrs. Bean. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, the new Travis Bean designs, but he asked me to do a signature, which is kind of insane yeah. to do. So I did a silver burst. Um, I've been playing this for a few years. I think this came out in 18, 2018. What were some of the things you asked Kevin to do? And is it maybe based off of like a T, like a 500 or a thousand model, like thousand one? Yeah, a? It's the, yeah it is exactly. It's the okay. uh, it's the A. It's a thousand A reissue. Okay. Well, it's not a reissue. It's just a remake, I guess. Well, the thing is, though, Kevin's machining is so beyond what they were capable of in the 70s. Mm. So precise, I imagine. Yeah, the precision is is more tangibly accurate and i don't know how to really put it otherwise but playing i have several old travis beans too which i love very different characters but this one is um there's something right here that it just feels more accurate here this little dip in mm. inside here but it still has brass nut which is something some of the beans had back yeah. then, but not all um and we we coiled the um the pickups are hang you know they're coiled by Kevin in his shop, um, you know, according to this, no being specs gotcha. and stuff too. And I know that Kevin does metal body guitars, like Buzz has the signature metal guitar. Is this a wood body or a metal body? This is Koa. Oh, okay, so it yeah. is just so, like the old ones. Yeah, and they they made um, several with pine back then too, but um, some of the Koa ones they made back then, also the artists, they did paint. It's kind of stupid to paint Koa now, <laughs> yeah, because it's so rare, but in the 70s, I guess it was have a surplus um, furniture wood um, uh, alternative to mahogany. Mm -hmm. So it was used a little bit more, you know, just as a product. Now now it's pretty expensive actually to get a slab even this size, size but we decided to do it through the Silver Burst anyway. Uh, one of my first real actual guitars was a Silver Burst um, Les Paul. So okay. I've always had a um, place in my heart for that. It, something about that striking about those like cosmetically the Les Paul and the Les Paul is like a classic traditional shape but when you throw a silver burst on it and then yeah. they start to fade and get that green look to yeah. it it's yeah. really cool yeah it's very definitely. unique to that type of coloring and layout but yeah this, there's all those myths about the Les Paul silver burst too that the that the um the paint had a um, the substrate in the paint was denser or something mm. dulled the sound down I don't know if that's true I mean Les Paul is always kind of dull to me yeah. in a way compared to Travis Bean, mm -hmm. of course, but any guitar would be, I guess. But, yeah, right. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, we were specific about the radius too, but, um, and the uh, fretboard material, but, um, you know, it's not, it's an artist anyway, which is a, is the custom Travis Bean, but mm -hmm. it's more of the um, accomplishment of having a interaction actually with them. Yeah. You know, so... Um, yeah, yeah. So I've I've been playing this one um, with Son for a couple of years. Awesome. But I also have some of Kevin's other guitars, the Electrical Guitar Company stuff, which are, are pretty nice. Yeah. And what should we know about uh, strings and tuning that you're using on this? Um, we tune to a drop A kind. Of, it's basically a, a baritone. A baritone, but it's not a baritone length neck. So um, I think in this I have a seventy on the bottom all right and then basically a heavy jazz set so 56 oh okay on the e and yeah but uh on my some of my other beans i have up to a 74 wow. on the bottom yeah and on, on the electrical i have a electrical um a lucite um sg shape called the ghost that kevin made for me that's um, cool which i use flat wounds oh wow yeah with like a 72 bottom and that's 
that's a particular thing too. And is it uh, like Ernie Balls, Dunlop, what string, or D'Addario? Anything you can get All your of hands those. On? Yeah. Well, I mean, I got a lot, I don't know, some string companies gave me a lot of free stuff at some point. Yeah. D'Addario did. So I've been using that for a couple of years. Got it. Good, it's good stuff. I mean, I'm not too particular about it, but I had some custom st uh, steel strings made. But that doesn't work with my with the brass nut really. mm -hmm. and the this bridge. They break too often, so I went back to the nickel. Yeah. And pickup switching, are you kind of all over the place, or you stay in the middle, or does that just happen to be where the switch is at now? Are you I kind of keep them bridge? both open, and I use the volume to blend them, actually, okay. rather than switch back and forth with this band. Mm. But um, I would say in general, my playing, I, I always have it on the... Um, yeah, the back pickup, so it's brighter. Yeah. But with this band, uh, just the way the guitar feeds back and the resonance, the sound pressure, it's good to keep them both open and move to move to the neck for yeah, some of the some of the pitches, depending what pitch it is. Mm. Yeah. Now uh, we joked off stage that like part of the allure of the band is the the amp setup, but part of how yeah. you guys use them is is kind of part of the they're musically part of the band. A band member, so let's well, meet some of the other band members. Yeah, here. I mean, for me, uh, my philosophy is that I'm just part of this bigger circuit of the instrumentation, which is, of course, the amplifier, the speaker, the, the valves, of course, the fil different various filter voltage filters, essentially that are that are effects pedals mm -hmm. and um, the air and feedback. Um, so. Like who's in the band? It's it's a bit more more like um, a material um, and the ego of the people. Yeah, that's the way I do it. But certainly these amps are the I would say the main characters of the band. Now I assume that we'll just split it down the middle, and this is kind of your setup, it. okay? Yeah, that's how we're doing it. And then when I did a rundown with Matt Pike with Sleep, he had eight or nine oranges and he was using them almost as different EQs yeah. like some of them would be more yeah. bassy mm -hmm. some more treble yeah. is that what you're doing or are they all just set equally the same and just pure volume or are they EQ'd differently to complement the whole thing well they're you know these amps are 50 uh, some are about 50 years old and some are about my age a little yeah. less than 50 years old so um, you know, over that time, they've been any sort of maintenance that's happened, of course, and, and uh, modding yeah. by the various owners of those 50 years. They got different characters, so there's a bit of that like mm. approach. Like I would say, rather there there are different iterations of the same instrument that are tuned differently. Okay. Yeah, and part of that tuning could be EQ, but a lot of it has to do for me with the saturation on the input and the output saturation. So there's. I guess kind of in a nutshell, my concept of playing this music um, for tone involves just many, many, many different gain stages that are all intonated differently depending on the pitch of the sound and including the different um, uh, gain stages in the, in the amps, of course, and also the gain stages in the speaker, That's the what speaker I was gonna... folding and all of this type of thing and the comb filtering that happens with the uh, speaker folding. I was going to ask, is sound. there a specific, uh, specific like speaker that you seek out or is it just kind of what you guys kind of obtain or, or you know, have you found certain speakers do certain things to yeah. what the whole, again, the whole enterprise is doing? I, I'm kind of into that, yeah. It, um, when we're on tour in the states, we do a lot of rented backlines, so we can't get so specific. But yeah. at home, I have a lot of low, lower wattage speakers and greenbacks and stuff, and like thir or like thirty and twenty watt speakers. Okay. Um, on this tour, we're using just like SIR uh, four twelve uh, Celestian seventy fives, but mm. and then we're also borrowing some of the stuff from Sounds the new Sound City Neil Oster. Osterberg. Okay. And these are um, new Fanes in here. We oh, okay. We still have the, these are Fane 70s, I think, in this. Um, yeah, F70 Gs in, in these. These are two Fryat stacks. One is older. Um, and I think these all have 50-watt um, speakers in them. I'm not really familiar with this brand. It's just Neil from Sound City also okay. works for them, and he offered... You know, we have so many cabinets, it's, it's great to, um, SIR's rates now are ridiculous, so 
it's nice to have some variation in the speaker cabinets and, and also collaborate with some people too, you know. And then just so everyone knows at home if they're keeping score, obviously every is everything on all the time or are you switching between amps and engaging them like you said the gain stages or are the amps always on and everything else you're doing is guitar volume and the pedals? How are you adjusting the, sun, the dynamics and stuff? Okay. Yeah. The suns are always on. Dynamics. I use the volume pedal a lot and also just on the I mean I would say most <laughs> the the real fine tuning is just coming through the, the volume of the guitar, of mm. course. But um, there's various paths that I use here okay. uh, for different t co slight shades of color saturation or grain. Like if it's a paint, then it's the it's the uh, the the shorter bandwidth color gradation or the density of the the paint. Yeah, I would say with the, the density of the pigment. So on this board, typically for most of the life of the band, I've used this rat here, which is unfortunately I'm having a day off. But um, this is a yeah, big box rat that I had a Keeley mod done in like 2000. And I just always used the op amp setting on what, that what, thing. What was that mod that you had Keeley do to it? Well, he did the Keeley mod where he, he changed, changed out some of the um, electronics in okay. there and put it and uh, part of it was putting a op amp setting that um it's just, it's just a higher gain stage and with the the travis being so these pickups are like up to 1.5 volts so it's quite a lot more than most guitars mm. so already with that i mean it's coming not, in hot yeah they're not active but it's um just the dynamic slope that you can get from the guitar alone it's been the basis of my plan. <laughs> yeah. um, but with Sun, we're using, um, there's a lot more distortion effect and saturation effects. So, yeah, for years I was using this. And then, um, of course, we have the life pedal here, which is, this is the third iteration of it. I love Congrats using on this. that. That yeah, one just came great. out again, another, another round awesome. of those. That's a really awesome, also another awesome, like, collab with the, to work with that company yeah. and gear and stuff. It's great. Jamie and Julie and their whole family is a, a good, good people Yeah, good people, totally. Um, and it's interesting, because then we have all these characters, too. The Life Pedals character, the Model T's are characters. <laughs> the old, the old, older ones, uh, the first generation, the Super T here. You know, they all have stories, too. These, this one was purchased from Eddie Van Halen's studio. Oh, wow. We have, we have two that we bought from there. There's different st stories behind the, the amps. The Buddhas. Is the, oh, yeah. These two. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of characters there. So the metaphor you were talking about, about the band being bigger. Yeah, I mean, it's Greg and I playing duo guitar. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot of uh, different um, spirits in the air there. And then I... I I use a um, Swiss things also from Earthquaker just as uh, for two effect loops um, that I engage from time to time and one is a goes to his fuzz master this um, Cornish G2 and the, the black ash um, maybe they're not all on at the same time but yeah. if I want to change that yeah that density of the pigment you know so to say one of the ones that echo <coughs> and that goes to a 201 which okay. I, I love the, I have a collection of these this one's from Ryan rapper our beloved um, uh, guitar tech and then I also work a lot with the French company auto machine so yeah. this is a bam it's the reverb i just got turned on to those via uh matt mitchell from pussifer he had a couple of those in his rig mm -hmm. and that was their they're really cool yeah they're really diverse they seem really interactive too i was one of the first people to play guitar to use them uh -huh. i'm friends with dennis Cajou. uh i live in paris he li that's where his shop is and stuff so he was ex I, I learned about these from mika vinyo from pansonic and okay. he had learned about them from um, sleazy from Throbbing Gristle. So the lineage of this, these um, came to the guitar later. It was mainly like electronic artists using these, but it's great. Analog circuit, digital control. So. Um, yeah. And the, and then on the Rat, is that I'm sure based around the, you know the legendary 308 chip that on the, on the, the life pedal. Yeah. Okay, the life pedal. Mm -hmm. But that that one too. Rat, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember exactly what the Keeley mod is, but I knew uh, several of the caps were changed. He basically changed out the shittier 
components? Components, yeah, at the time. But I, I'm not as, Greg's really knowledgeable about all the components of this, um, of rats. Uh, I, I don't really, I haven't really gone in that, that much it. with this, more just like what is the result for me, so. And before we move on to Greg's setup, what is the, the, the gray box here between your tuner and the life pedal? Oh, that's an archer. It's a, oh, okay. It's a, yeah, a clone. Yeah, a clone. clone of the silver clone. And then these two uh, SVT stacks, how are they getting used? Okay, so those are also in the guitar chain. It's okay. a, it's not exactly biamping, but of course you have a, yeah, a very different power structure, uh -huh. um, which I guess um, fills out the low end a little bit more, but actually it's a bit more of this like brutal sounding. Uh, probably a nod to our like fascination with death metal and stuff yeah a bit more but actually these stacks one of these is a spare okay but it goes through that that channel is channel four for me so it goes to the mti and then this slaving th this vr actually so we're not using the preamp of the vr but this is different uh for us on this tour to use these japanese uh svt oh cool mtis right um but the VRs are something I've used a lot. I mean, we have a, in Europe, we, we own a lot of vintage um, SVTs uh, in the band um, community. Yeah. Um, but here on tour, we, uh, we just rent the VRs, yeah. And then the last thing I want to touch on is the Aguilar pedal and then the pedal to its right that has mm -hmm. numbers on it. Is that, is that like what you're alluding to is the amp switcher? Yeah, the this is made, channels, I guess. This is uh, made by the guys at Bright Onion. I've worked with them for years. We've done we've done a lot of different routing switches um, with this band. Um, the first initiated with Gentry Dansley from uh, Eagle Twin. He built he was building us these um, switchers for a while. But I uh, I started working with Bright Onion to make a smaller one. So this this is uh, splits between four channels and it has phase control and ground lifts on each or three of the channels, so we can tune the back. It's all about tuning, too. You're tuning the signal with these, all the effects, but also tuning the amps, uh, keep things in phase is is fundamental thing. Yeah. The, for the, you know, the, the structure of the sound. And then real quick, the... Uh, the Aguilar is an optimizer. It's just kind of like a fun punctuation that <laughs> comes on once in a while, and it definitely... The way I hear it, it abstracts the guitar sound into something that's more like um, minimalist electronics, actually. <laughs> but it's fun to kick it in sometimes. It's not a main component for me, the way I use it. It's, right. it's more like a punctuation at times. Yeah. Well, Stephen, uh, I, I really appreciate you taking yeah, the time. This is a treat, so and uh, we're going to talk nice to Greg. talking with you. Great. to the right here everyone i'm joined by greg greg thank you for joining us thanks for having me yeah absolutely before we get started i do have to say another special thank you for uh creating and being an ambassador of heavy music for creating southern lord that's, absolutely. A, that's absolutely. a man yeah it's a it's an honor sleep and a, all the band pelican all the right on love all that shit that you guys do so appreciate not only creating this band but also being an ambassador for heavy music uh, right so, on man thank thanks. you yeah Enough of that prelude. Let's dive into what we're here for. Gear, man. So uh, talk to us about this special Les Paul that you've used for years and years. Well, this one I got <clears throat> probably, God, I'm trying to think of what year it was. Maybe it was like 2008, 2009. All right. Um, I had another gold top Les Paul. It was at 89. And it, the neck, we were on tour. We were on tour with Boris, actually. And the neck uh, snapped on it and um, mid-tour. We went the next day to just to whatever guitar center, guitar st was the closest guitar store to us, mm -hmm. and went in there and I saw this and it's like, well, 
that looks like the guitar I had. So yeah, um, it originally had um, the mini humbuckers. Yeah, and uh, I didn't I didn't care for the way those sounded actually. Mm -hmm. um, thought they were a little thin, so I switched them out for these uh, Demarzio Super Distortion uh, pickups for this. And this is uh, this is uh, been the, my one of my main guitars for a really long time. Other band I play in Goat Snake. This is the guitar that I played. Uh, in, in that, and um, I have another black Les Paul 72 um, that I've been playing a lot lately with Sun, but um, I kind of bring this one out for special occasions, Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I, I consider this evening to be a special occasion, Absolutely. so I was like, uh, asked our uh, our main dude, Ryan, to, uh, to set this up for tonight, so. Now, uh, what do you dig about those Super Distortion P90s? They have a nice grind to them. And it's a high output, and um, it just sounds great. Like I, I, I've always, I kind of fell into the P90 because that guitar I mentioned before that that broke, yeah. um, that had P90s on it. I, you know, when I was a lot younger, and and I got my the first gold top Les Paul. I, I I really honestly got it because I wanted a Les Paul, and I thought the gold top looked cool. I didn't really know. I didn't even, couldn't even tell you the difference between a humbucker and a P90, you know, uh -huh. at that time. But it was like, oh, some interesting soap bar pickups that that had. And it just ended up kind of becoming part of my sound, you know. I made it work with, I've always, you know, had a rat pedal and then these Sun amps. So yeah. it's like it just, it sounded really good with that. So, you know, I just wanted to continue using and getting that, that sound. And it's, it's got a, just a cool grind to it and, and some some noise to it that I think adds to the character and the overall body of the sound. The first thing I kind of really did with the uh, the Les Paul with the P90s was uh, in the late 90s, uh, the first Goat Snake album. And the guitar sound on that record, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the, the guy who captured the sound and stuff, but the sound of that, the sound on that is very unique and it's, it's, it's heavy, but it's got its own flavor to it, its own character. And I... I literally, you know, I kind of just fell into it. It wasn't planned out. It's yeah. just, you know, it's that case of like playing with what you, playing with what you have yeah. and and making that work, and then, you know, um, you fine tune that, and, and then that's that's how you get your own sound. You know. I mean, I've heard in your, uh, interviews you guys have done earlier in the career and the creation of the band was that sometimes you were even borrowing gear, guitars and amps and stuff. Yeah, totally. So like to get to the point where you have an established sound mm -hmm. and. Uh, the full arc of that is, is pretty astonishing in terms of where you started and now where you're at and you you kind of fell into some of it and it's just been part of the band the legacy of it yeah i mean especially in the early days our idea was to play through as many cabinets and amps as we could get our hands on and we were young and broke and and didn't have much so we would just try to borrow things and cobble things together and and then eventually you know uh, you just kind of accumulate gear and and you know back 20 years ago, it was also 20, 25 years ago, it was a lot cheaper, you know. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's dive into a little bit more, like Steven said, the other characters in the band. We covered the guitar, so what should yeah. we know about your amp setup and how are you using everything? Well, it's the Model T's. I mean, it's pretty, you know, uh, I, I, t I try to keep things pretty simple on the front end because these, t these T's are just, they're killer. They're, they're the killer power, powerful amp, you know, and I started off in the mid 90s with one of these things and uh which is i think of this one and then um eventually just started adding to them and developing the uh the wall, the wall of sound you yeah know, with these things i lived in seattle washington and um i had um i had gone to a basement show in olympia washington and i saw this band called lice that had this really great <laughs> guitar great player name. named tim green and tim green was in bands before that like Nation of Ulysses and um, uh, the fucking Champs he was in that band too okay so he was he was in this new heavy band that I had heard about and I went and saw him in this basement and he was playing a Model T and I immediately was like what is that because I'd seen you know growing up in the Northwest you'd seen a lot of Sun solid state stuff and like I you know I was really familiar with it because of Buzz from the Melvins yeah for example and I really liked, you know, his sound was very influential. And so he was using these solid state, smaller like sun the hands. And they were everywhere, all the pawn shops were everywhere. But I'd never seen, a, you know, a larger thing that had tubes in it. So I talked to Tim after that show and he told me about, um, you know, uh, 
the, 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 you know, it's a Model T. It's made by Sun. It's tube amps, and it's just so powerful. So I immediately uh, wanted to, you know, I had to have one, and um, I found this one in a um, uh, in, in an area called Fremont in Seattle at a at a flea market. <laughs> it was like a flea market, <laughs> an indoor flea market in a basement, and this guy had a bunch of like old records like yeah. on the shelf, and then like underneath the shelf was this. I saw the Model T and I was like, oh my God, there it is, you know, and I'm like, and I'm like, hey, what's up with that? He's like, you want that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, what's the deal? And so I got it for really, you know, really cheap and he's like, yeah, get it out of here. This thing's heavy and I'm tired of carrying it around. You yeah, know? he was happy to unload it. Yeah, it's a lot of clean power. So, you know, you can put, uh, you put, I usually, you know, put a rat in front of it and that's, that's the sound, you know, yeah. and of course the guitar is very important in that too, but, um, that's the sound that I've been working with for all these years. Yeah. Like it really hasn't changed much, you know, so. And, and I was asking, Stephen, is there anything that you do in EQ-wise in terms of, like, uh, the amp individually themselves, but then also as a collective? Are the amps kind of a different version of EQ, or is it everything's just working together in terms of, like, everything's dialed similarly? The, everything's dialed... It, very similar. Okay. There's no. I'm not getting anything. I'm not going for anything different or having one that's like Stands. a different character okay. than the other. It's like it's more about just you know stacking <laughs> stacks yeah. and stacks of <laughs> and a wall of sound. You know. So it's like I don't do much uh, different. Sometimes you know I'll tweak. You know, sometimes these amps. You know, obviously they they, they they can sound different too. So sometimes I'll tweak it here and there if I hear something. Um, like oh I, I think this needs a little more a little more treble on it or I need to reduce the okay. reduce the bass on this um, so sometimes I'll do that but it's I mean it's it's so it's so minimal you know and minute that it's it's not you know yeah it's, they're they're the same pretty much got so. it yeah. and a similar setup with the Ampegs being like this one's running and that's slaving into these yeah so it's this one here okay. I mean and these are and these are rentals so the, the, we 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 don't. Um, I don't own these, okay. but, but I love using them. And we, this is something that I would use really only in Sun. Any other group I've played in, I haven't played. Any. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't, haven't played a bass rig as well. You know, it's more. It's like, you know, other bands I play guitar in, it's been like, you know, maybe two stacks of of in with the with the Model Ts. But the Ampeg is is something that we use uh, in Sun exclusively live. Okay. Um, and yeah, we've got a slave here. This one is here is slaved, and then this is a backup okay. actually because these these. These tend to go down here and there, you know. So yeah, we, we try to um, we have a we we're, we're we're prepared, you know. Well, I was curious about how much you bring in terms of like an amp technician or someone that can handle that, and then also backups because we did ACDC 2016. And I love that one. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> Angus great. was yeah. blasting like nine or ten Marshalls. Yeah, and he's like hot as hell, and they're burning out. So yeah. like they're switching in and out amps all these different shows. And he's got shows. a guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's great with that. Yeah, we have a we have a guy that's amazing. This guy Ryan Rapp. He's he's our guy. Like we won't leave home without him now. You know, yeah. he's just like he he is. He's a MacGyver. He, he's he's a he's an amazing amp tech, and he just he knows these things really well. And so, so we yeah we you know I mean these things are. You know, these things are uh, over 50 years old, so Insane. it's like, you know, it's an antique road show is what this is. <laughs> yeah, so, a very loud so, one. A very loud antique road show. So, yeah. Uh, so he, uh, you know, we need to have somebody that's like, that knows the stuff because, yeah, these things tend to go down, but but we're not playing them, you know, we're not running them. Like, they're, you know, they're, they're all being run and they're able to take what we give it. I mean, yeah. it's not like we're like abusing these things. It's more, you know, it's... I mean, we've we've figured out over the years oh, I bet. how to use them, and, and I mean, I mean, and it's it is the it's a it's the sound that this is the sound of the band, yeah, you know, almost more than anything. So, the amps, you know. Well, let's dive through your uh, go through your pedal board real sure, quick, just sure. so people know that, and uh, sure. tell us about it, Greg. I try to keep it pretty simple, to be honest with you. I I, I love pedals, and I've I've totally gone down a lot of rabbit holes, and I own a lot of pedals at yeah. home. I really like to. Um, yeah, at some point, because I, I started off really simple. I started off my my setup was literally just a rap pedal and a tuner, uh -huh. and then um, and then I got went down a rabbit hole with pedals, and I started you know just geeking out, and my pedal board started expanding, and I was noticing I was having spending more time on the board and and, and troubleshooting here and there with different things, and 
finally I just like, you know what, I just want to go back to keeping it simple and because this sound doesn't need a lot of extra stuff. And yeah. Sometimes I would just be like, it'd be overkill because most of the stuff that I'd be stacking was just different distortions and fuzzes and games. Yeah. And it's like after a while, it's like, dude, it's just, just, it's just a mess, you know? <laughs> so It's a cacophony. <laughs> And that might be cool, but it's like, uh, so I was, I was like, hey, you know, I'm just going to go back to the basics. But um, one thing in that kind of all that experimenting is that I really uh, discovered is I really like this, the blend um, of a, a big muff and a rat pedal. And um, those two together and basically using the rat as a, um, as a boost for the muff. Mm. So I set the muff kind of lower um, and, I, and I have a preferred... Big Muff, which is the Civil War Big Muff, the Sovtech, okay, the Russian. Was gonna ask that, so glad you covered it. Yeah, man, that's. I mean, I've, I've, I geeked. I went so far down a rabbit hole with the um, Big Muffs. I love that pedal, and I have there's so every, many variations of it. Every, I love that. And then copies you know, of it too. That's so cool. Yeah, I got into all of that, and I narrowed it <laughs> for me. I narrowed it down to the specific, um, the Civil War. Uh, uh, what they call the Civil War Big Muff. So what? What about that? Is the one? It has this. The it has a massive low end to it. Okay. It's just it, it, there's Big Muffs have a lot of uh, t you know typically all of them have a, 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 a nice amount of low end, but this one has it just has more depth to it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the bottom is rounder, and uh, it's it's just I just feel it's just great, and 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 I blend it with um, you know I've been like I said I blend it with the with the with the with the rat distortion, and uh, it gets a nice, really like just powerful kind of chewy sound to it almost. Mm. But so <clears throat> currently on the board <clears throat> is the is the pedal that that Sun uh, helped develop with life uh, with uh, Earthquaker the the life pedal. So um, and I love that because okay it's it's it has the rat circuit in it, mm -hmm. um, and then it uh, it also has a boost at the end, which is something I was also um, uh, when I was experimenting with all those pedals, I found like, oh, I put a boost at the end of everything, and just makes it makes it louder. But it also drives these tubes, uh, drives these amps a lot harder too, which it, it gives sure. a really nice, really nice warm and 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 uh, chewy ooze to it, you know. Uh, so great words. <laughs> so, uh, so, so when we were um, talking with Earthquaker about. Um, Developing this pedal and, and the idea, it's like definitely the rat has to be part of the you know part of the sound, and then um, and then a boost at the end. But we also um, we also um, wanted to create like kind of an octave uh, oh. uh, t uh, on it as well. So like we were really into the um, the Japanese uh, fuzz pedals from the late '60s and '70s, like the uh, the super the Shine, the, the super fuzz. The FY2, the FY6 Shanae, and the and also the the the, the fuzz, fuzz wah, wah yeah. without the wah, yeah, just the fuzz. So we wanted to create something like that, and we made it so that 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 is an option where you can where you can bring that in or bring it out uh, uh, of the sound. But but really the whole you know the makeup of this pedal is the is the rat Into and the, the boost. boost. Yeah, but I used to, I've really started I've really started becoming uh, fond of the of the octave so I blend a lot more of that and that kind of gives it this real um, this real grind to it that I really like um, and then I have the optimizer the Aguilar optimizer like Steven has it as well I yep. use that certain moments of the of uh, of, of when we perform to get just like a ridiculous um, beating um, fighting uh, sub bass type thing happening it's like it's more of a sort of a it's an effect that's like <laughs> kind of creates some some chaos and and uh, uh, just some some, <laughs> some real sub sub shit, you know? yeah. <laughs> so and um, and that's it for the effects. And then I've got it all routed through this uh, router box. That this guy, I think it's called Bright Onion yep. Pedals. Yeah, he he de he um, he designed this and. Um, Steven had one, and uh, I'm like, oh, this is great, because we, we'd always work with splitter boxes. That was a really important part of this group, to be able to, to play all these amps and, and together and, and keep them in phase, because yeah. I was running on, with cabinets and stuff, and sometimes these heads could be out of phase with each other. Yeah. Like, like the red knob, sometimes we were finding was out of phase with the 
the Buddha uh, with, with, the, with the original one. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, this helps you with that, and um, and when you're running that many amps and cabinets, it's, it's important to have something that can help correct the phase if necessary. So we got that, and then you know tuner and a tuner volume pedal. And, and, and I I like the volume pedal because um, started using that probably six or seven years ago because it's like I like to be able to like go from you know the full volume ripping your face off to yeah. nothing i really like that being or, able to do or that as it says on here the set list burn with motherfuckers i think that's <laughs> oh, I think that's, that's actually burning witch motherfuckers um that's a um a reference to a band steve and i had back way back in the day we predated first thor's hammer right after thor's hammer okay yeah thor's hammer um the singer Runehild went back to Norway and me and Steve wanted to keep playing together so we started a band called Burning Witch and um, that riff is a Burning Witch riff so, so our set is kind of peppered with uh, you know ghosts from the past yeah. you know <laughs> so it speaks like we got we got stuff from our you know, very first stuff we ever wrote and then we also have something from Life Metal too that was a piece of music that Steven and I um, wrote together that um was kind of a, a nod to our early stuff, but also features a, a solo section for each player to play, like you know, some riffs or whatever they're feeling like playing in that section. So it's, it's very organic how you, do, you guys do perform live. It's almost like a baton toss between the riffs and then the solo, and then you ch change positions in that regard. Yeah, and we kind of try to you know, have one person will play the riff and the other one will feed back, and it's interesting to hear how um, that feedback interacts with what. The what the what the riff is sometimes it's very dissonant and it's like and it's like gah, 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 and then sometimes it's like it's just smooth and then sometimes it creates interesting like octaves or something it's very it's very cool um last night we were playing in atlanta and it like man it really sounded to me like this kind of like a pump organ where it was just like this push and pull <laughs> you know it was like really cool it's like very interesting and sometimes uh atonal and then sometimes just like just really like heavy and, and in unison so mm -hmm. um, it's cool to play with that you know like play, uh, playing off each other with the feedback I mean it's been a huge important part of what we do so it's an uh, uh, like obviously you're together playing everything going but then also how you play together is like an organism it's 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 alive yeah yeah I mean <clears throat> life metal I mean that was <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and, and, and that, that's you know and those are the choices that we made to record with Albini who's his he's the absolute master of capturing a band as they sound a in moment. the room yeah you know a very um, a very um transparent uh documentation and so we we're like that's why we did that record that way with him was and we wanted to have a, a nice document of that because a lot of the records we have are very different from the live show there there's a lot of they're more conceptual and they're they're, you know, they've they've got many textures and layers and different instrumentations and choirs and, you know, strings and all this stuff. So, it it, it was nice to do something that was like, um, that was just really raw and and in in the moment, because mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that's an important aspect of this group, you know. So. Yeah. Well, Greg, I really appreciate the time. Uh, yeah. It looks like the VIP people have trickled in, so that's my sign to get the hell out of stage and let you guys do your thing. Right on. Right I really on. appreciate cool. you guys, cool. and uh, yeah. stay safe and keep rocking out there. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. Not, last but not least, there are so many characters in the band, uh, and we're joined by Anna, who runs the Fog Machines, which is a critical part of the guy's whole aura, mystique, mysticism that is behind mm -hmm. the band. So tell me about what your role in all what we're seeing and the lack of what they're probably seeing in the audience right now. But how are you doing and what is your participation in the band, the performance? Yeah, so I'm Anne and I'm the lighting designer and uh, the master of the fog for the, <laughs> for the show. Which we just got a big blast of from the courtesy of the sound guy, Chris, who, who fogged us out. Yes. But what, what are you trying to do? What do you bring to the, to the stage? Obviously the guys have the presence, the loudness, the volume. But what is your job? What, what are you supposed to do? So my job is to make this loudness and sound visual for people. Uh -huh. and support this amazing sound uh, with all the visual as aspects, which are lights, darkness and the fog. Yeah. And the fog has always been a big part of sun and their live shows. And the fog brings the sound and everything so much closer to people. Like, because we use so much fog, um, often people are kind of 
it comes to them. Yeah. And they are surrounded uh, about it. And also, they might be in a totally in their own world. Yeah, it, it's funny how that just kind of, you know, a cloud of created smoke does that. It, it brings such a whole different element to the performance and, and then uh, the experience that the, the audience gets to feel. And so uh, the other thing that the guys both mentioned off camera is the actual noise of the machine adds to everything too, right? Yeah, that's true because we use, uh, use always the powerful fog machines. Yeah. And because of the pressure, the the sound is quite loud. Yeah. And the fog just comes, and then then you can hear the sound. And for all audience, it's often also a, like a cue that okay, now something is happening, and the big burst of fog is coming. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people are excited about the sound too. So again, just like we had when we we're talking about the guys, this is always a omnipresent or a present mode as we get another strike from Chris is that this is an organic performance each night's different I'm sure your cues are different so it's just it's every night is a whole no, new experience yeah and that's one thing which is great with this band that every night is different not only because the like the venue or yeah. actually that's one of the big reasons because how the fog behaves depends on the AC and uh, the venue and size and the height and everything and it's always kind of a surprise to me too like what will happen <laughs> and for example here the fog just stays yeah we are in a cave and it doesn't move anywhere yeah. so they will have the fog here tomorrow morning <laughs> yeah they will well thank you guys very much and thank you very much for joining us and telling us about this wonderful experience that uh, is Sun O thank you thank you oh we got another one <laughs>